At Kentucky Bourbon Festival, there is so much to do. And one of my favorite things this year was checking out some of the craft distilleries. I want to share with you a few that I fell in love with that you may not have heard of. And if you have, you've been holding on to us. And if you haven't, you might want to look for these. Let's get into this. Welcome back to Old Fashioned Waste Plus Plus. I'm Doc Martinez, and I just got back from KBF. And I have to do a few different videos, like a, videos that are not normally my type of videos uh, because I just had so much fun there. I want to share this with you. Now, this particular video is of a few craft distilleries that knocked my socks off and that I had never heard of. So maybe you haven't either. At KBF, I was lucky enough to hang out with my family. I had my wife and two of my daughters there with me and we got to just hang out. I also ran into my friend Sean from Echoes in Eternity. And that's a funny story because it's the first time I met him in person, but I swore I've known him my whole life. He's just one of those type of guys. This first one I'm going to talk about, he actually mentioned to me. So let's start with Larinkin. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Larinkin was easy to find because it had a huge inflatable kangaroo outside of it. I can't remember if I took a picture of it, but if I did, I will put that right here. Larinkin had just changed the name from Lawrenceburg to Larinkin, and it was being announced that weekend. The name is Australian for something like against the grain. I also love that they have these little stickers on them, which I'm going to show you right now. And you see these little, these little stickers, you tap your phone next to it and it actually gives you information. But we all know it's not about the presentation, right? It's about the juice inside. And I have to say, this is some of the most unique and surprising pours I had at Kentucky Bourbon Festival. I actually ended up picking up these two bottles. This first one here is a high wheat rye whiskey. I've never heard of that or I've never had one either. High wheat rye whiskey. It just hits the palate so differently. It was one of my most unique pours that I had for the weekend. It was probably the best unique pour I had and that's why I had to grab a bottle. This one is called Decade and it's a 10 year rye whiskey. And it has a really great story. And we'll talk about that sometime soon because Sean and I will be doing a live stream on September 27th to share our experience at KBF and to share some of our pours and share, share some of our pours with you as well. These are two great bottles. And if you can find them, I recommend grabbing one of each. Now, next on my list is WKY. I'll put a picture of it up here. I bet you never heard of this because it is a newer distillery, but they actually produce Hemingway's Rye. They are family and they do this together. So it's a new and upcoming distillery that will be producing their own line of products very, very soon. They do produce for Hemingway and we did get to sample a special bottle they had there of the WKY and it was outstanding. It was a special bottle. He gave us a little pour and was nice enough to share that with us. I'm also looking forward to other things coming out from Hemingway because they had some good bottles there and they had a special 11 year rye that was for their dad's 50th year in the industry. Uh, we did do a small interview with them and we will get those out pretty soon. So I'll have mine coming out very soon. I'm going to do this as a very, like very quick edit. So not my normal type of video and not my normal type of editing, just so I can get it out so you guys can see it too. So it's going to have very limited editing. I hope you like that kind of uh, video. Next on my list is Old Steel House. Now this distillery is from the grandfather of Maker's Mark. They had a few spirits there to try, but this bottle, this straight bourbon whiskey coming in at 54.8 ABV, which is 109.6 proof with a mash bill of 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley. This one was a banger of a bottle. I enjoyed this one so much after all those pours. And you know, I got quite a few that day. This one still stood out to me and made me have to buy a bottle. Now they did have a weeded bourbon there. I unfortunately did not get to try that and I love weeded. I wish I did. I should have gone back. It's just limited time and so many things to check out that I didn't get to. We did do an interview with them too and I will have that coming up pretty quickly as well. Now, last on my list, but believe me, there were a lot of craft distilleries there and I not did not, did not get to visit them all. I wish I did. But this one, I hope will get to Texas soon and it's called Redline. This was super interesting and different to me. Now they do have their three basic bottles and I'll show you a video of that, but they have a series called Element. 
And this particular bottle that I got to try there is a straight bourbon finished with Mongolian oak. Mongolian oak, have you ever heard of that? He was explaining that it's a very unique oak from Africa that is very limited and very hard to get. And they were actually making barrels out of it. They actually got the wood and had them make barrels out of this. They stated that they lost a lot of liquid due to the way the structure of the pores are on this, but they were very happy with the results. Now, this Mongolian oak is so unique and different, it is hard to describe. I did buy a bottle of it, but I don't have it here with me to show you today because Sean was nice enough to take it to mule it for me and get it home. I will get that from him sometime soon. And I'm going to sit down. I just want to, I can't wait to get it. I just want to do a deep dive into that bottle and just sit there and taste it and kind of just enjoy that Mongolian oak and see what flavors does it impart. What does it you know bring to mind for me? And I don't know if I'm going to do that as a review or if I'm just going to do that on my own to enjoy it, but we'll see. We'll see what we do. Now they also, so Sean mentioned about that he really liked their honey finish and they actually had it there. So they pulled it out and they shared some of their honey finish with us. It was wow. It is definitely one to watch for. Now Sean said it's a real beater. Like this is going to knock real out of the water. I tasted it and I really enjoy it. And I would love, love to, I can't wait to get my hands on my bottle so I can do a blind with that and a real and maybe some other honey finish or amberana finish cask as well and see which one wins. I really did like it. So I definitely suggest you watch out for it and grab a bottle if you find it. Now I would grab a bottle of one of their elements if you're trying to wanting to try something unique because both of those were just so unique and so great. Now, as I said, as I mentioned, there are a lot of craft distilleries and I did not get to get to each one. It's just time and and my family and, and Sean and just enjoying the moments with them. But my goal for next year is I'm gonna try to hit more of them. I'm gonna try to hit each one at least once or get very close to it. As I dive deeper and deeper into my whiskey journey, I realize that I do need to appreciate craft whiskeys more. We need to show more support to them. There's just so much love and effort that goes into a craft whiskey. And sometimes you're gonna find a great bottle that's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. It's not, you know, it's it's gonna be its own unique unicorn that you need to try. And I hope some of you have those out there that you can say, hey, you need to go look for this one. You need to try this one because I am enjoying like just next level love of these craft whiskeys. They are making some very unique, amazing pours. And you know, we gotta, we, we're not paying crazy secondary prices for them and, and we can just enjoy them and sip on them. And the cool thing is, you know, if you're in the area that they that they distribute, they're usually pretty available. Now, I want to know what craft distilleries do you enjoy? I want to taste more and more of these. And I don't know what I've been missing out on. So if you know any that you think I should try, put them in the comments below. I would love to hear it. Also, don't forget, Sean and I will be doing a live on Friday, September 27th. And we'll be doing a lot of pours and giveaways from the bottles that we got at KBF. You won't want to miss that one for sure. There's a lot, a lot of great pours and wait till you see some of the bottles we brought home. If you haven't, Sean actually put out his uh, bottle haul and uh, what I'll do is I'll leave a link to it right here. Go check out his bottle haul video. There's a lot of bottles there. It's a lot of fun. And another cool thing is a lot of these craft distillers are excited to share their craft and their stories. So we talked to a few of them, we did a few interviews and a few of them want to be on our lives. So I would love to get some of them on our lives in the next few months, help spread the word and help spread the word on some of these, these craft distilleries that are not in my area, but that might be in yours or vice versa in my area and not in yours yet. I will also be releasing a lot of videos coming out from KBF that are not my normal style. So I hope you enjoy them. Well, my friends, thank you again for joining me on another journey down my whiskey rabbit hole to our next journey, my friends. Cheers.